Ladies and gentlemen, this is Fortune Gentleman 24. And to let you know, it is good to see you all again. Now, sadly, is the phone really need to be calling now? Screw you! Screw you, kid! Okay. Now, this should, this would mostly be part 7 that I'm supposed to be playing, but it's gonna be part 6, and even though the video that I had planned to be showing you had my friend in it, he wasn't able to show up. So that one will be the next episode. That will be the next part. So this part is just gonna be me reading the story to all of you. Now, yes, you're looking at the screen and this format. I will most likely possibly keep keep going like this way at the start of Jane. I don't really mind. I got used to it. But for our story to begin, we must click the book. I believe we've actually almost cleared almost everything out of this area. Like some of them we cleared, some of them we haven't cleared, I think. Three checks. Uh, let's go with the bottom. I believe there's somewhere that we haven't checked yet. Oh, shut up, Gosson. You understand nothing. Nothing. Go with this. Yes, I'm Trebion. Moron. Hey, we got a coin. Oui, monsieur. Chancelon. I declare a special brew of your guys' famous soup. Hmm. Let's go to the top. Oh, hold yourself, you stupid garçon. Just let me get my soup. Make sure there's lots of crackers and biscuits and butter, too. Mm, I love me a butter biscuit. And then we probably gonna fix it. Hold on. Here we go. Thank you for the table. Now isn't that sweet? A father and his, I want to guess maybe daughter or grandchild. That's kind of nice. Very nice indeed. But, I hope the story that we read will be awesome. Plus I do believe that this mostly, I think I figured it out that this thing actually is random so you never know what story you're going to get. So if you most likely some way you actually got this game too and you think you're able to follow along, you may get some other stories than what I get. So so further ado. Let's begin with a brand new story known as Lady in Red. No way, now when I think about it, maybe it shouldn't, I was mostly thinking maybe, I think maybe this name should be called Lady in the Red, but it's called Lady in Red. So, eh, yeah, it's decent. It's a good name, but okay. But, Lady in Red. <clears throat> we didn't believe in ghosts. So when the following, so when the fellow checking us in warned us that our room on the sixth floor was haunted, we just laughed. There were a lot of crazy people out there who believed in ghosts and wanted to stay in a haunted hotel. But Maria and I weren't, weren't two of them. I chose an Amisava for our weekend getaway because I liked the description of the hotel. 
as a mitanese not because it has a phantom phantom <laughs> just for kicks Maria asked the fellow who was supposed to haunt our room he told us that it was that it was a ghost called the lady in red she was a prostitute who was strangled by Joel's boyfriend and her tormented spirit still lingers in the hotel. So they are in a sex motel. That's mostly what I got. They're staying at a sex motel. Okay. She was said to follow guests around and play the gaming equipment in the casino. Oh, I guess maybe that's like the archway or the stairway to get up to the bedroom, maybe? Or the staircase to get to the hotel, maybe? <laughs> A gambling ghost? I asked laughingly. The boy glared at me. I was sorry to make a joke about something he obviously believed in. We said said a hasty good night and went up to the sixth floor. As we neared our room, Maria gasped, at, gasped, gasped and grabbed my arm. I stopped and looked at her. She pointed wide-eyed toward the far end of the hallway. Before our, our eyes, the glowing figure of a woman came hurrying towards us. I thought, what could this be? this be a prank? I shivered suspiciously, my skin pricking in the sun cold as she rushed past us and walked right through the wall next to our room. Good lord. My god, there really is a ghost in our room. I can't. I really wasn't all that, that wasn't really all that excitement going, oh! There is a ghost in our room. Who you gonna call? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not going in there, Maria said firmly. Her face was pale and her black eyes were wide with fear. No way. Nah, uh Never, ever. I didn't much feel like going in there either, but we had a got we had gotten a special deal for two nights. Paid in advance and non-refundable. I didn't want to waste our money. In the end, I wrenched up the, op I wrenched open the door, turned on the lights, and investigated every corner, looking for the lady in red. She was gone. Or is she? You never know how these prostitutes act. These prostitutes can do crazy things if you think about it. Like, they can take you for a wild ride for only a buck fifty. <laughs> uh, Maria honestly refused to set foot in the haunted room. In the end, I had to go down to the suppressor room on another floor. The boy didn't say much when I told him we had seen a lady in red. But he gave me a no, no at all smirk that made me want to smack him. And so I must do a room on another floor. I will smack that guy, dude, for giving me that. Oh, I told you so, didn't I tell you? Cause I told you. Mm hmm. Don't like those people. Not at all. They are pushy. Maria barely got a wink asleep that night. She kept waking up. Afraid that the lady in red would come walking through the wall and do terrible things to us. We were up at dawn, and I checked out the musaba by breakfast time the next day. So we thought. So we thought. Wait, so we thought that they checked out? Oh, whoops. Whoopsie. Oh, I didn't read that last part right there. So, like, so here's it. Uh, okay. Maria thought that she saw. Maria was thought to herself that maybe 
the lady in red could come out at any time. So she thought she saw her once again. Or did she? I don't give a care. Ah, fuck it. From the day on, Maria always booked our hotels. And she always made sure that there were no ghosts anywhere on the premises before she made a reservation. <laughs> okay, that's kind of funny. That there is funny. Hey, all right, we need to blow out the seventh candle. Stupid steam. Thank you, steam. Okay, the lady in red. That. Uh, it, had, it only had one murder scene where someone, a prostitute, got murdered. But everyone knows don't hate prostitutes. They have lives too, they have a soul in them as well. And for all prostitutes out there, I salute you. <laughs> Actually, was quite entertaining. The story behind it was delicious. Because I didn't get my biscuit. My son, nah, get on it. Yeah. One point. So I like the theme. Let's get a movie really right back after I adjust it. Let's go. This should be scary. I hope. What the freak? Okay. Name of the story, Invisible Hands. Does it kind of make sense for that picture right there? Like, you see a whole bunch of statues, their hands are, their hands are to their side, but you never know. What. Maybe a pair of hands will come out and grab you. Just straight out of nowhere. <laughs> uh, that's not even scary. I'm sorry, but that's not scary at all. Not one bit. I'm ready. Bring it on. Ooh. A couple of Welsh miners came to the back to help mine the Comstock Road. They were quite a pair of tricksters. Yes, sir. It got so bad. And no one believed anything they said. Because if they did, the Welshman would make them look like a fool. But they were popular. The miners dearly loved to laugh after a, after a hard day's working in the mine. Oh, I bet they did. I bet they did. Oh, I'm going to change something with the sound. That works. <clears throat> now, one evening, the two Welshmen started down the slope of the Bartholomew shaft. They were looking 
They were working at a late shift. And they descended they as they descended they began hearing the sound of hammers striking a drill. Punctuated with the sound of voices. He, neither man recognized the voices. So they assumed it was some some new chap working the late shift. Oh I wonder. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Who knows? Only you know. My idea said, but if you have no idea, then what are you doing here in the first place? The men grinned at each other. They liked pulling jokes on newcomer. The Welshman followed the sound of the hammers and came into a shaft. Flickering with light and a single lantern. The Welshman were amazed to see two hammers floating in midair, striking the head of a rusty old drill that was rotating itself. Ghosts are here, and they're here to hammer you freaking down to the wall. They could hear a murmur of voices, but couldn't know, but see no one. Hmm, I wonder why. Giving a startled yell, the Welshman beat a hasty retreat. Climbing to the top of the mine, they gasped out, gasped out the story of a few of their friends. No one would believe them. It was just a sort of, it was just a sort of practical joke them men had learned to avoid. Finally, the Welshman grabbed two of their fellows and dragged them, protesting down the slope. When the four men entered the shaft, the invisible hands were still at work, hammering at the drills as they talked to each other. It's Bulka, shouted old Ned, who hailed at Colonel England, the Bulka. Tommy Knockos, or a small imp or spirit who haunted mines. I'm getting out of here! Well, why? Why are you getting? Why are you leaving? The fun's just starting. The miners ran out of the shaft and hurried up into the starlight. Or they couldn't leave the starlight behind. The Welshmen were not too quick, not too quick to play jokes on their friends after this incident. As they stopped investigating mysterious noises. Hmm. That actually does make kind of good sense. And I like it. That was still a funny. It was funny as hell. If you get, if you think you very able to pull tricks on people, just wait till you get, till just wait till you see what happens to you later on. You will be fooled by the appearance of ghosts. I still like it. Mm, so good. And with those, the invisible hand is now. Doing actually pretty good on the candles. That was loud. <laughs> yeah, it's got on that was actually pretty good. You actually did have some good taste. No. If you don't mind, I will be right back. And we are back. I just had to get something real quick. And, you know, that story was pretty scary. So, yes, Garcon, you did a good job. But I could have used a little bit more of a better taste. Hey, we got a coin. All right, more coinage. Coinage, 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 coinage. I'm not saying that. Say, koi fish, koi fish, koi fish. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. All right, let's go. Let's wassle. Scary, yes. No, fuck. 
All right. Our last, our desert. Ghost of Easton. No, wait. No, not ghost. Sorry. Goblin. Goblin of Easton. Let's see. It's about goblins. Um, it's in the east. And people are going in. That's my guess. And my theory. I'm sticking with it. Mmm. Pressure. Also, remind me, I will be taking suggestions on another game that you guys want to see. Ow. Um, if you have any ideas of what game you would like to see, just let me know and I will think about doing that game. If it's a game I like, I will do it. If there's multiple games that you want me to try, I'll try each one of them out, and if I like it, I'll play it. If I don't like it, I'll just pick a game out of random and try to play and see what happens. You know, the first thing I'm doing an uploader on YouTube is, the first part is the most important part. I've learned that. So, for the next video I do for a new game, the intro in part one will be... Amazing. I hope. Let's go. Let's read. Let's read the Goblin of Easton. Let's go. Mm. Okay, here we go. There was once a monk at the mission at the mission who loved money and power more than he loved God. He loved God more than any. He did not love God more. What kind of Christian is that person? He would hear the confessions of the good folk who attend the mission, and then would blackmail them into giving him gold and silver to keep their darkest secret. He turned many a wayward sinners towards the fire of hell rather than the gates of heaven. Encouraging their crying in secrets while he revealed them in public. This guy's an ass. I think I'm ah. Yeah, he's an ass. It was after he beat one poor old beat one poor old woman to death that the evil monk was in prison and sent to hang for his crime. But, just after he was cut down from the news and pronounced dead, his course began to transform before the horrified eyes of the people. The face twisted and, and small tusks sprang from the other side of, of his nose. From his nose? So he's an elephant? That's what I'm going his shock of white hair grew long and greasy, greasy, and two pointed canines emerged from his slit of a mouth. Hmm. Huh? Okay. The goblin monk opened open eyes that glowed yellow, even the light of a noonday, and sprang to the feet that now ended in claws rather than toes. The people screamed and fled in terror. No and no prayers of the former bro brother brothers in faith could banish the goblin. It disappeared deep into the forest, only to return at night and prey upon the monk of the mission who had been responsible for his death. After five of the brothers had fallen to the goblin, the rest of the monks abandoned the mission and moved to another part of the country. Since that time, the mission house has slowly fallen into ruins. Wow. That's kind of neat. But kind of 
fucked up. Cause okay, yeah, okay, yes, that was actually pretty creepy. That was creepy. I will admit that, but damn. What the hell, man? Jeez. His body transformed. He grew tusks. Canine came out of his mouth. Boom, he's a goblin. Like he blackmailed people. Sold their souls. We'll be right back after these few short messages. I gotta say, Goblin of Easton, love it. I do like that one. That one actually was pretty good. That was actually a pretty good story. Creepy, yes. Horrifying, yes. Murder. And someone got hanged. That's not that bad. I like it. If you liked it, that's good. If you don't like it, boo on you. Screw you, and I like it. <laughs> uh, who doesn't like little ghost stories like these? <gasps> oh, there it goes, number 27. You can hang with that thing, it's loud. Now, awesome. That was good. You get a good dessert. The cookies at night. One, two, one, two, three. Three, two, one. Wait, how that one thing going? Going one, two, three, three, two, one. What the heck is bothering me? No, I don't know. One, two, three, three, two, one. One, two, three, three, two, one. What the hell is bothering me? It's a ghost, of course. Shing. Free the balloons. That was entertaining. You know, it's, it's been a while, so let's go crack open that thing. Let's see what we get. Okay, first thing we get. Hey, not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. 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 Hey. Fish. Ooh. Hey. Book. Tab. Oh, nightmare. Flambe. Oh, alien dude. Uh, shadow! Jack the Omar. Ten at all. We got a China doll. Oh man, but look at all these characters. I believe it's Grace the Cat. No, wait, uh, Butler Cat. Uh, Surfside Witch. Flambe. Jack Scary. Sweet. Uh, Celia Boss. I believe that's Nightmare. General. Uh, Baby. Cameraman. Talking Samurai Head. Alien Man. Sun point no night e my own shadow. Oh, is that it? All we had for that one? Well we have a the fish. One one of these days I will actually get this whole entire thing pulled up. 
I will grab each and every single character in this book, in this game. I promise you that. But until the day we are not there yet, we are going to keep collecting coins. I'm all. I'm all. Stop lying. See you. <laughs> fun game. So I will see you all next time when we return to Caden Restaurant. Woo!